Hello, I'm Garen Featherston, and welcome to another edition of Demon Life. Today, my guest is a former NSU pitcher and now graduate assistant, Jeff Stovall. How you doing, Jeff? I'm good. I'm good. That's good. That's good. So tell us a little about yourself, Jeff. Where are you from? Wow. Um, I'm from Irving, Texas. Um, I went to high school at Irving High School. Mm -hmm. We have three high schools there. Um, I graduated in 2011. Hmm. And... Um, that's really about it from where I'm from. Yeah, so what made you wanted to get into baseball? Oh, wow. Um, well, growing up, my dad was actually a boxer, so I got into boxing for a while and um, realized it wasn't really for me and then kept playing baseball. And uh, I love basketball as well, but I wasn't one of the taller guys. You know, I'm only six foot tall, mm -hmm. and Irving is a big basketball city, and, you know, it's around Dallas. And uh, I just knew baseball was the best fit for me, and I thought I was best at it. So I just stuck with it all through middle school and high school. Oh, wow, well, nice. So I heard you uh, went to Nebraska. Yeah. What made yeah. you decide to go there from Irvin, Texas? <sighs> well, um, I started getting recruited uh, by Nebraska junior year of high school. Uh -huh. um, it was a big school, a big name. Um, you know, I was young, I was immature. I didn't, you know, really know what was best for me. I just wanted to go to a really big school. Um, I was getting recruited by some other schools, but they weren't as big. And Nebraska stood out the most to me. Um, you know, I could have gone to a junior college if I wanted to, straight mm -hmm. out of high school. But um, Nebraska was just, you know, big football town. And um, so I decided to go there. They gave me a, a good enough scholarship for, that I could afford. And um, so I went there for one year. And um, unfortunately, it didn't work out after my first year. Um, so I decided to go to the junior college route for two years. Okay. Uh, I ended up going to Howard Junior College in West Texas, middle of nowhere, actually. <laughs> it was much, much different. It was kind of like a culture shock. Um, you know, it's, it, it's dry. It's, there's like, you know, no buildings anywhere, yeah, you know. Imagine. Cotton field, it was much different. But um, junior college, I think, was the best thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, at first, I hated it. And then I realized that I wasn't ready for Nebraska. I mean, I just, my talent and my, like, uh, you know, talent level wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a freshman, I was young. And so going to junior college really helped me develop to become able to play in the Division One level. And so I, I ended up actually going to Howard for one or for two years. The first year I had surgery, okay. so I got a medical red shirt. Um, went back for another year and I played, got better, and ended up coming to NSU. Mm. And um, I mean, I couldn't have found a better place, honestly. Yeah. I got I got lucky with NSU and and um, you know going to Nebraska, big college town, thirty thousand yeah. students, to a junior college with you know like a thousand students, if that. And then come into like a, you know, a happy medium with NSU in between both of them mm -hmm. to where it's not too small or not too big. And I found, you know, the best place for me. And yeah. I was happy about it. So, yeah. so you mentioned you transferred it to NSU. How was uh -huh. that competition wise? How was it from going to Nebraska? To right, NSU? right. You know what? Um, competition really isn't much different. You know, people think because we're in the Southland that, our competition isn't as good as like in the Big Ten, for example, where Nebraska is. I mean, you know, especially with baseball, um, I think some Southland teams can easily compete with the Big Ten teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people wouldn't agree with that, but after playing in it for one year in the Big Ten and then coming here and playing in the Southland, I realized there's really not much of a difference players-wise and talent-wise, there's really not. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're a big school, they get more big names. But I honestly think, you know, because we're in the Southland and we're a smaller school, we're yeah. more blue collar and we work harder mm -hmm. than the schools that get everything they want and everything they need whenever mm -hmm. they want. You know, we got to work at NSU, you got to work hard for it and, and not everything is given to you. So I think that's why, you know, a Southland, like a Southland team like us can, can compete with, you know, Big Ten teams. So really, you know, transferring from there to here, it was a big culture difference, yeah. but when it comes to baseball as a whole, it really wasn't that much of a difference mm -hmm. um, when it comes to competition. So, yeah. 
So as a pitcher, mm-hmm. you know, you have your uh, strategies of how you want to attack the batter. Right. What's what's some strategies you always had in your head coming up to in the plate? Um, I mean, it depends on who is hitting, you know. Um, as a pitcher, especially a smaller guy like me, I'm not very intimidating, mm-hmm. you know, when people look at me and when yeah. I'm on the mound. So I got to act like, you know, I'm a big tough guy up there and, and kind of show some cockiness, but at the same time not be too confident. And, and um, my mindset, you know, when I was facing a really good hitter was, um, I mean, really just, you know, letting my defense work for me. That's the way I pitched. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wasn't a big strikeout pitcher, um, but at the same time I didn't walk a whole lot of guys. So pitch to contact. Right, exactly. I was a pitch to contact kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't have an overpowering fastball or, you know, a wipeout slider, but I just tried to get ground balls and pop flies and, and trust my defense. And I think um, I think that helped me a lot. And that was really my mindset was just those strikes and if they get a hit, they get a hit. But most of the time, you know, statistics show that they get out thirty percent of the time or like or less. Yeah. So, you know, letting my defense work for me benefited the most. Yeah. So that was pretty much my mindset when I pitched. Cool. So what the audience don't really know, they know the game of baseball, but they don't right. really know the behind the scenes. Right. So tell us what it's like as a pitcher to go through the off season and train and get ready for the season. Oh wow, as a pitcher, um, it's pretty difficult because you know, you get here in the fall and you throw a lot and you work out a lot and you work your arm a lot for the first couple months mm-hmm. and um then you go to Christmas break and you take a month off by yourself. Mm. And you got to, and that's the, your off season before the spring starts. And you got to, you know, your trust, your coach has to, has, have to, has to have trust in you to be able to work on your own and throw on your own. And, um, you know, training wise, pitchers are different than position players, but, um, you know, it's really just making sure your arm's in shape while you're gone in the off season. And, um, just getting back and getting ready to go. Mm-hmm. Well, Jeff, now you're all graduated. Yeah. So tell us what it's like to dr- transition from a student to now a graduate assistant. Um, it's much different, much different. You know, a lot of the guys that I coach now, um, I played with last year. Yeah. And I played with the year before that. You know, the seniors right now, I played with the past two years. So, you know, I, were, I was really close friends with these guys. Mm-hmm. And I still am, but at the same time, there's a certain level of respect when it comes to being on the field and off the field, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it was much different, or it was, it was a big surprise for me, you know. Right when I started being a grad assistant, I tried too hard to, you know, demand the, a, lot of, a lot out of these guys, and they kind of laughed at me because they were like, we just got done playing with you. How are you going to tell us what to do? Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I gained that level of respect from them. You know, I wanted to be, I want to become a coach and I want to gain the respect on the field. And so, and so now it's gotten a lot easier for me because, you know, if I do ask them to do something on the field, they'll do it. But at the same time, I can laugh with them and, and all that, like I played with them before. But um, it, w- it was definitely different moving mm-hmm. from player to coach. So. Yeah. Well, just seeing them training now, I know as an athlete, yeah. don't you just get the urge you just want to oh, go back out there? Yes, I really do because <laughs> especially this fall, um, we were low on pitchers. And yeah. so when we inter-squatted on the weekends, um, th- they needed me to pitch. And, you know, I'm a grad assistant, and I just got done playing, so it's really not a big deal if I throw an inning or two. So I would get back on the mound and throw against these guys and I had no pressure, obviously, because I'm not playing anymore, but mm-hmm. I just went out there and pitched. And then I got done, and I was like, wow, it just made me miss it 10 times more. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm so excited about becoming a coach that I obviously miss it, but I want to work hard to where I want to be as a coach. And I, that's my mindset, and I'm so dedicated to that, to where I'm happy with my career as a player, and now I want to start a career as a coach. Mm-hmm. And that's really what my mindset is on right now. Yeah. So from playing in the game, you you, you kind of know certain Major League Baseball players. Mm-hmm. And I know you grew up with one shortstop right. of the Colorado Rockies, Trevor Story. Yeah. Tell us a little about that. Uh, yeah. You know, growing up with Trevor, we grew up, uh, you know, knowing each other in middle school from sixth grade to being with each other almost every day to senior year in high school. Um, you know. When I played with him in high school and middle school, it wasn't that big of a deal, you know. He he wasn't 
as famous as he is now, and I didn't think anything of it. You know, I knew he was going to be a professional player one day, and I knew he was going to have great success at the professional level. But now, like seeing him as you know well known in the country because of you know how well he's done this past year uh, for the Rockies, it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, and people are people always come up to me and ask me, you know, like how what's it like like being friends with him and and all that and I'm like you know it's really nothing different you know if I see him in the off season we act the same way around each other and all that but but it is really cool seeing you know one of your good friends have success like that and um, but I don't see him any differently he's one of the most humble guys I know I've always thought that about him hmm. uh, you know he's he he's had such fast success in the past this past season that you know his head could have gotten really big he could have yeah. gotten really cocky you know walked around with that kind of attitude but he's honestly one of the most humble guys you know if you walked up to him you would have no idea he was uh you know a big time baseball player in the MLB because he would never he would never express that unless you asked him so yeah. he's he's a very humble guy and 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 I'm glad I get to be one of his good friends um but it, yeah playing with Trevor was great so are you a Colorado Rockies fan just because you're best friend? I am. I am. You know, I've always been a Rangers fan growing up in Dallas. Yeah. But, you know, he's been with the Rockies since, he's got, since he got drafted in 2011. So I automatically became a fan five years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that he's in the big leagues with them, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could say I'm a bandwagoner, but at the same <laughs> time, you know, it's one of my good friends is a shortstop, so i got to be fans of that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's understandable. Right, you know, yeah. right. But um, about MLB, we just had an epic Game 7 of the World Series. Right. And, you know, the Cubs took it. Do you think they could repeat? I hope so. They, well, yeah, I think they could. They have a really mm. young team. You know, like a lot of the guys are ages from, like, 21 to 23 and 24. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, they're guys like me and you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they're 24 years old, and it's just crazy to me. And as a young team, I think they have the ability to do this the next couple of years, you know, win the World Series, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not, uh, probably not, but I think they will keep having success as a team. I definitely think they'll make the playoffs again, so. Good. Speaking of playoffs, do you think our NSU Demons baseball team will be able to make the playoffs? Oh, absolutely, hey. absolutely. Uh, you know, our talent wise this year is off the charts. Mm -hmm. You know, we got a lot of new good hitters, a lot of new pitchers. We lost a lot of guys last year, like Adam Mahler. Yeah. Uh, you know, he got drafted by the Pirates and we lost him. Mm -hmm. um, but absolutely, I, we, you know, this, these past few years, we've made the playoffs. And unfortunately, it didn't work out in the conference tournament. But absolutely, when it comes to playoffs, I really think we have a good chance. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, it's been nice, Jeff. Been Thank nice. you. Thanks for having me. Thanks I appreciate it. And now uh, this is Garen Featherston reporting with our another episode of Demon Life. Stay tuned for next week.